All right, for those of you just joining us, welcome and thank you. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, welcome to the Down Payment Programs 101, What Every Agent Needs to Know webinar. Uh, today, we're gonna be discussing the basics of down payment assistance programs. What do they have in common? How are they different? And what do you need to know to start conversations about down payment assistance without being a program expert? I'm Will Medina from our DPR team. We also have with us Sammy Giacci and Tracy McIntosh, additional team members, and Veronica Candlewall, our VP of Housing Finance Agency Relations, and Marcy Ash, our Director of Strategic Projects. They will be answering questions in the background, so please use the Zoom questions feature to engage with them as we go. And before we get started, please note that today's recording of the webinar will be shared with everyone. So we always like to start with a quick bio, a little about who we are. Down Payment Resource was launched in 2008 to solve a problem that drove a lot of people in real estate and mortgage lending crazy. There was no easy way to find and track home buyer programs. So DPR developed an easier way to connect eligible borrowers with hard to find resources like down payment assistance programs, grants, MCCs, mortgage credit certificates, and other assistance. We provide tools and down payment assistance program information for real estate agents, loan officers, and ultimately consumers to help all of you find and understand the down payment solutions out there for your buyers. Ultimately, we are here to help you connect home buyers to the down payment help they need. So a quick rundown about what we will be discussing. Uh, today, we'll discuss loans, grants, tax credits, and other programs that can help eligible buyers achieve the down payment faster, cover closing costs, and get them into a home sooner than they would have otherwise. A current snapshot of the current state of home buyer programs. So, of all the home buyer programs out there, 74% are some sort of down payment or closing cost assistance. Now that's really a catch-all category though, and we'll dig deeper in a few minutes, but it's important to note that not all DPAs are the same. For example, 64% have deferred payments, meaning you don't have a monthly payment on the DPA loan for some period of time. 43% are forgivable, either in part or in full, essentially becoming a grant over time. And 38% are both deferred and forgivable. And then there are still other DPAs that are true grants at closing or are repayable monthly after closing. We'll break these down further as well as the affordable first mortgages and tax credits or mortgage credit certificates in a moment. DPA is available. We understand that there's a common myth, myth that down payment assistance programs may not be available in certain areas. These programs are everywhere. Some markets have more home buyer programs than others, but there's a state housing finance agency in every state and their programs are available statewide. So there's literally no county or market in the country where there isn't at least some kind of DPA or other home buyer assistance. So who offers these programs? Who funds them and administers them? I mentioned every state has at least one housing finance agency. City and county governments often have community or economic development departments or housing authorities. A number of nonprofits like NeighborWorks and Neighborhood Housing Services and others operate in markets across the country with varying programs. Many employers like municipal governments, hospitals, and universities also offer their employees down payment assistance. Then there are community action agencies, land trusts, and so many other organizations out there, all trying to open new doors to home ownership and promote housing growth and responsibility in their market, your market. And they've all got funded and available down payment assistance programs. So when looking at current DPA trends, we wanna remind you that all state housing finance agencies are opened and accepting reservations. Even with COVID, Housing finance agencies had a record year in 2020, which continued through 2021. And for the loan officers on this webinar, this is all purchase business. 
Now that volume has petered out a bit in 2022 with higher rates and continued appreciation, but we still see a ton of DPA transactions. Local programs are still available and new programs are frequently added. Home buyer education remains online and 84% of all DPAs are funded and available. So yes, down payment assistance is still available and not going away. Now, all of these programs share some basic universal requirements. For example, there are only, they are only for owner-occupant buyers. These are not for vacation homes or investment properties, although in some markets, the assistance may be available to buyers of two to four unit properties as long as they will occupy one of the units. They all still require some minimal investment from the buyer to keep a little skin in the game. Now, this can range from $500 to $1,000 or maybe more, but remember, these buyers are also investing time in the home buyer education process, too. Buyers typically complete a home buyer education course to qualify for a DPA program. And of course, these aren't cash buyers. We're talking about buyers financing their home with a mortgage, so they have to qualify for a mortgage as well. With those universal requirements in mind, let's take a look at the three most common types of home buyer programs and what's unique about each of them. But before that, we'd love some audience feedback. So we're going to go ahead and put up a quick poll. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so the question is, what percentage of your business is made up of first-time home buyers? So please take a second, lock in your answers, and then we'll get started. All right, so let's see if we can Take a look at these results here. All right, so maybe some technical difficulty here. So we'll go ahead and just uh, get started. I appreciate everybody uh, submitting the answers. Um, so the most common home buyer programs. Now the three most common types of home buyer assistance programs are the down payment assistance program, the affordable first mortgage, and the mortgage credit certificate. There are variations and certainly many other names for each type of program, and that's what we'll clarify as we learn how each one works. But remember, as we go, no two programs are exactly the same, but we're gonna learn the basics of each type so you can understand at a glance what your options are. So first, let's review down payment assistance programs. Down payment assistance programs are by far the most common type of home buyer assistance in most cities. Every state has a housing finance agency, which is the housing division of their state government. And just about all of them have some form of a down payment assistance program, as well as local government and nonprofit program providers who offer DPAs. These programs are typically grants or silent seconds that offer down payment assistance of several thousand to tens of thousands of dollars to eligible buyers for down payment help. Now, as you can see there, we'll start with grant programs. Uh, grants are uh, gifts that do not have to be repaid. Uh, repayable seconds, uh, funds provided at closing that may or may not accrue interest, and the loan could range from five to 30 years with a varying repayment terms. Uh, deferred or silent seconds, uh, the repayment of the original amount is postponed until one of several events occurs, commonly when the borrower sells, refinances, or a change in occupancy. Forgivable seconds, uh, where some or all of the original down payment assistance is forgiven. Often a percentage of the loan is forgiven each year for a predefined number of years. As an example, it's common for a forgivable uh, DPA to be forgiven, say, 20% per year 
over five years. And often, down payment assistance programs also allow the funds to be used for closing costs, prepaid expenses, uh, rehab or repairs, which can be particularly important to enhance a property or accommodate livability standards for disabled buyers, and even loan principal reductions, the most common uses. All of these uses help the buyer shed the costs of purchasing and financing a new home. Now, one of the most common misconceptions about down payment programs is that the buyers must be first time buyers. In fact, there are about 2200 programs across the country maintained in down payment resource and 38% of them have no first time home buyer requirement. Beyond that, most programs adhere to HUD's definition of a first time home buyer, which effectively states that you're a first time home buyer if you haven't owned a home in the last three years, with still more exceptions to the rule for widows, divorcees, displaced homemakers, and other circumstances. But in just about every market across the country, we see programs that waive the first time home buyer requirement in targeted areas, make exceptions for veterans or certain professions or just don't have the requirement at all. While down payment assistance comes in many forms, they all help the buyer reduce the down payment burden, open new doors to home ownership, and pocket a little extra cash up front and along the way for other home ownership obligations. Many of these programs are grants, meaning they are interest-free, payment-free gifts to buyers who meet the eligibility requirements. Others may bear interest, but defer the payments for the life of the loan until sale, or even better, until the affordability period expires. So for example, many stipulate that the buyer occupy the property for a certain number of years. That could be three, five, seven, maybe 10 years. And then the lien is forgiven, essentially becoming a grant. For those programs that are not grants, many will take second or third lien position to allow for layering of other assistance programs. So what are the eligibility requirements? Well, most have the following limits. Eligibility depends on the program and the funding sources. Income and purchase price limits are always market adjusted, often based on calculations for the area median income or the average income of their market. But basically they all have income limits ranging from 80 all the way up to 140% of area median income or AMI, and sometimes even higher, which can creep into six figure incomes in many cities. They typically have sales price limits too, but those are usually in line with HUD's loan limits in each market, offering assistance at or beyond median home price values. The location of the property is critical as each program, especially at the city or county level, offers assistance within specific boundaries, such as city or county limits. But remember that the programs from your state housing finance agency offer assistance statewide. So they cover your entire market. We even have some nationally available programs integrated into down payment resource. Some programs have more needs-based eligibility criteria. That involves an evaluation of each buyer scenario and assistance needs by the program administrator. And most programs will mirror first mortgage requirements, as an example, requiring a FICO score of 620 or higher. Homeownership history makes a big difference too. Many programs are only for first time home buyers, but there are many for repeat buyers or even current owners too. And remember that a first time home buyer is simply someone who hasn't owned in the last three years. Now I'll expand on eligibility as it pertains to military service and certain professions in a few moments, but both can open new doors to assistance that may not be available to the general public. Ultimately, these programs reduce the buying cost for a buyer and expedite their timeline by offering down payment or closing cost help that enables a buyer to reduce their out-of-pocket expenses and retain their liquid savings. Now, as an example, think about someone obtaining FHA financing, having to put 3.5% down. If a down payment assistance program helps them bring more to the table and instead qualify for a conventional loan, they're bringing 5% five, uh, uh, this effectively lowers the monthly payments and the long-term financing cost. Specifically, an FHA mortgage has expensive upfront mortgage insurance premiums and higher monthly mortgage insurance costs that last the life of the loan, 
whereas conventional mortgages have no upfront mortgage insurance premiums and lower monthly insurance premiums that can be canceled once the buyer gets to 80% loan to value. When you reduce loan to value, you also lower, lower debt to income ratios, which help more buyers qualify and increase their home ownership possibilities. Most importantly, it increases the purchasing power of a buyer's income, allowing them to more readily qualify for the home they like, and in some cases qualify for a little extra home to suit their family needs. Of course, reducing monthly payments also allows for a little extra cash every month to dump into savings, which has been shown to improve default rates. Increased purchase power offers a competitive advantage. Now, many down payment assistance programs require the buyer complete a home buyer education course, which provides valuable information about the home buying process and resulting responsibilities of home ownership down the road. This better prepares potential buyers for the obligations they face as owners and the steps they'll have to take to get there, ultimately enabling them to be better clients and more adept decision makers for you along the way. And more and more down payment providers are offering online education options for their home buyer courses. Course material is typically in line with HUD certified home buyer education. Most courses are simply an eight hour class that can be completed on a Saturday or during a few evenings of online sessions at the consumer's discretion. This allows buyers to work ahead towards down payment assistance pre-approval and hit the market as more competitive and informed shoppers. Most importantly, these buyers are far more likely, according to HUD and the Harvard Joint Center for Housing Studies, to be successful owners down the road. Default rates are significantly lower when home buyer education is completed before closing. Now, we'll look at another of the most common home buyer programs, the Affordable First Mortgage. Affordable first mortgages are additional mortgage options typically only available through a state or local housing finance agency. The most common benefits you'll see are below market interest rates, reduced mortgage insurance costs, and allowances for higher loan to value. For example, Fannie Mae's HFA Preferred and Freddie Mac's HFA Advantage offer reduced mortgage insurance below a standard conventional product, all with a higher loan to value. You can typically combine these affordable first mortgage products with down payment assistance and or tax credits from those housing finance agencies. Affordable first mortgages help further reduce the cost of home ownership for new buyers. Lowering monthly payments through lower rates or mortgage insurance pricing helps increase the purchasing power of each buyer and can potentially expedite home ownership for them. Getting them into a home sooner than they would have otherwise been able to. So now let's look at the third of the most common home buyer programs, the mortgage credit certificate. The mortgage credit certificate or MCC is available from state and local housing finance agencies in some states. This offers a federal income tax credit of up to $2,000 per year. Now, eligible buyers must get an MCC prior to closing, and then they get to use it every year for the life of their mortgage. The MCC tax credit helps offset part of your mortgage interest costs, and you still get to deduct the rest of the mortgage interest you paid each year. MCCs help reduce a buyer's federal income tax liability by offering a credit for mortgage interest paid. Some MCC providers will allow a lender to take the MCC credit amount and annualize that over a year to increase a buyer's qualifying income. And some MCC providers will also reissue an MCC through a future refinance. Let's look at an example of how MCCs work. Let's take a $200,000 home. The buyer closes and makes 12 payments in the year. They paid 4% interest, so $8,000 in interest that year. The MCC allows you to claim 25% of the mortgage interest paid as a tax credit, so $2,000 in this example, but the homeowner still gets to claim the rest of the $6,000 of mortgage interest paid as a tax deduction every year. 
So I'd like to wrap up this breakdown of the most common home buyer programs with a few other scenarios where there may be additional or unique benefits for your clients. There are many programs that offer additional or unique incentives to buyers purchasing in targeted areas, which are areas with higher foreclosure rates, vacancy rates, unemployment rates, or parts of town most in need of community investment. Typically, there will be no first time home buyer requirement. The assistance amount is increased, and the income limits and sales price limits are often higher. The idea here is to promote home ownership in revitalization areas, particularly so that core service providers and professionals can live where they work. These targeted areas are all over the map, not just in big cities. Targeted areas are usually bounded by specific cities, zip codes, or census tracts, or maybe sometimes entire counties. There are also special programs available in many markets that target certain professions, typically teachers and educators, police officers, firefighters, healthcare workers, and municipal employees. For example, in Georgia, the state funds the Georgia Dream Program that offers 7,500 in down payment assistance to eligible buyers. But teachers, police officers, and nurses can get an additional 2,500 for a total of $10,000 in down payment and closing cost assistance. The idea behind these programs is to enable home ownership among local core service providers. And many of these programs have very broad definitions of terms like educator to include not just classroom teachers, but public school system employees at large, like paraprofessionals, librarians, school nurses, or take, for example, protectors. That could include police officers, sheriff's deputies, corrections, and probation officers, and more. So please look for these programs in your market. Another targeted audience of eligible buyers is our armed forces, active duty personnel, and veterans. There are so many programs out there that waive the first time home buyer requirement for veterans. Some offer higher assistance amounts too. Many of these programs can be used in conjunction with VA loans and ultimately offer our veterans a little more flexibility to become buyers despite home ownership history. Some of these programs offer the same or similar incentives to active military and guard or reserves members. So we've given you a lot of information today, but we want you to know how to access all of these DPA programs once we leave the webinar. So I'll show you a number of ways you can access DPA info and start to enhance your marketing. Anyone can go to downpaymentresource.com and do an eligibility search for free anywhere in the country to see what's out there for you or your client. If you're an MLS partner with Down Payment Resource, we identify eligible listings in your MLS and match them to all available home buyer assistance programs. And we provide these matching tools in your MLS agent and client portal listings. You also get Down Payment Connect for free through these MLS partners. So check out DPR, let your clients know what's available and talk to your lending partners about which programs they offer. And as always, please let us know if you have any questions along the way. We are continuing to onboard MLSs and several more will be launching DPR in the coming weeks. If you're a member of one of the partner MLS, when you are logged into your MLS, look for our down payment resource button on eligible listings. You'll see these down payment buttons on agent reports as well as in your client portals. Click it and we will tell you or your client which programs are available for properties they like the most. Down Payment Connect is free for members of our MLS partners. If you're an agent and not a member of one of those MLSs, you can subscribe to Down Payment Connect for your own DPA search page and lead gen tools. Loan officers, we have a version for you too which allows you to control which programs consumers see so you are aligned with the product offerings at your company. So what is Down Payment Connect? Down Payment Connect allows buyers to complete a program search from your personalized link. This provides you with the opportunity to generate leads by engaging and educating new buyers about the down payment assistance programs in your market. 
You can use your Down Payment Connect link on your website, in your email marketing, and all social media. And just to be clear, you are not buying leads with Down Payment Connect. You are taking advantage of our unique DPA eligibility platform to generate your own leads. And nobody else gets your leads, just you. So we encourage you to get creative and reach more buyers and educate them on these opportunities. We'd also love for you to join our growing Facebook group, Down Payment Insiders. There you can join over 9,000 real estate agents, loan officers, housing counselors, and even DPA providers as they discuss best practices with DPAs, first-time home buyers, working with lenders, learning from each other, marketing ideas, the list really goes on. And you can listen in and learn or participate in the dialogue and engage with your peers. So I'd like to leave you with a case study that illustrates how important DPA info is for realtors and home buyers. Amber was a new agent in Florida. No one was helping her peers understand how down payment requirements, understand down payment requirements as many of them <clears throat> began to explore home ownership. So she stepped in and learned all about DPAs and built her business serving those same buyers. Like Amber's clients, DPA customers become customers for life. So tell their story, help them, and they will refer their family members and friends. In closing, please feel free to reach out to us with any questions. We are here to help you and your clients find the assistance they need. We can be reached at info at downpaymentresource.com. So thank you for joining us. Uh, we're gonna be sticking around for some Q&A. So if there are any additional questions, please, uh, we're happy to answer them. How was the uh, Q&A? Do we have any questions? Well, one of the questions that we've been receiving is re in regards to stacking, if there's the ability to stack programs or are programs um, more than one program eligible um, for borrowers, could they qualify for more than one? And um, the answer is yes, you can qualify for multiple programs and stacking is able to be done. Um, typically, if you have a second and then a grant, the grant not taking a lien position, and sometimes even a mortgage credit certificate can all be stacked together and stack, stack, stack away. Do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, no, I think you, you summed it up perfectly well. Truly, stack, stack, stack away. <laughs> hey, well, we have uh, Kathy asking if you can repeat how to find us in the MLS partners because uh, she's having a hard time finding that. Uh, let me go back here. So I'm looking for the slide. I will certainly defer to any of our other wonderful team members if they're able to uh, uh, address that, but I'm, I'm looking for the slide at the moment. I'm sorry, Tracy, what was the question again? The question is, um, can you repeat how to find um, the list of MLS partners? That's just what I'm assuming Kathy is asking is where that list is of the MLS partners. Gotcha. Um, my suggestion would be um, at the moment, just because I don't have that, that list on me, but I've gone ahead and put up some of our um, MLS partners. Um, unless... Uh, the partnership has been announced with them. I would reach out just to our 
info at downpaymentresource.com. Um, email address uh, with any with, with any questions pertaining to that specifically. Sorry. <clears throat> um, our part our partners are also out on our website at downpaymentresource.com. If you would like to go um, and look at our our relationships, our partnerships that are out there on that website as well. Um, I do see another question in regards to if there's a spreadsheet of all the down payment assistant programs available for the state of California. Um, we don't, but um, on our website as well, you can, anyone can do a search of the programs that are out there um, nationwide. So anyone can go to downpaymentresource.com and do a search. Um, the information there is not as broad as what you may receive if you are an active member of ours, but there is information, there's links to all of the information to the agency's information. So feel free to go out there and do some searches on our website as well. Thank you, Veronica. You're welcome. All right. What other Q&A questions do we have here? Hey, well, we yes. had um, quite a few questions about the training that needs to be done for home buyers. And one question is asking, is one training program sufficient to qualify for all of the programs? Is that something you can touch on our, or one of our staff members on the webinar? Um, I, I certainly welcome other team member feedback from my experience. Um, some programs have a very specific home ownership um education provider others um will allow i guess numerous providers uh veronica any uh any experience on your end with with with, with any of the specifics yeah um home buyer education the sooner the better and getting started on that for counseling yes. especially um typically hud approved counseling agencies are eligible um that's a great place to start. It's free counseling. It's for any first time home buyer or repeat buyer. Anyone can attend. So that's where I would recommend if you want to get started sooner than later. There are other um, products that may have requirements as far as if it's a Fannie Freddie or a, what, uh, a conventional even. There are other uh, education options online, but usually HUD approved counseling agencies are a good place to start. Great. Um, what, what other questions do, do, uh, do we have there, Tracy? Hey, well, I am searching through that we still have quite a few actually in here yeah. of open questions. So I know sure. our team's busy, busy typing away trying to catch everybody. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Hmm. What is the typical time frame where it takes to know if you got funded? Um, I'm not sure, Carolina, are you meaning um, to know if you gotten the DPA funds approved for yourself as a, a home buyer is what I'm assuming they're asking. So I'm not I'm not sure if, if that's what you're wanting, Carolina, um, on what the answer is for that. I feel like it's it's pretty quick and maybe Veronica can chime in here, but I feel like it's a pretty quick uh, result as far as our um, our website goes, the questions are very quick. It's very uh, fast process and only a few questions to answer to find out what all um, DPA programs are out there that are available for the home buyer. But then that obviously does have to go through the lender to see which ones are approved through that lending institution um, for the next part of the process for them to see what, what of those 
DPAs can be utilized in their case. Okay, we have um, another one, Will, where, mm -hmm. and I know we get this um, often, it's a, one of our biggest questions is uh, finding lenders that work with the programs and asking if we have a list of those lenders. We do not have a list of the lenders because we are nationwide, so we have so many uh, DPAs and so many lenders out there, but um, I know a good starting point to find a lender who offers DPA would be to visit your state HFA's website, and find a participating lender list, which means that they at the very least participate in the state HFA's first mortgage and or DPA programs. Um, we do have, um, when people perform the search on our website for the eligibility form, and once those results come up, um, for each program, you can click on those links for each one of the programs uh, to find a, a link to participating lenders, or you can also find some information on that in our Facebook group, the Down Payment Insiders Facebook group, and then that way you can socialize and connect with other lenders um, and realtors discussing all of that. So those are some ways that you can find that information. But it's definitely um, critical, I agree completely, to have good, solid relationship uh, between the lenders and real estate agents to best um, speed along the process. That was well said, Tracy. Thank you. Thanks, Will. Yeah. Uh, well, I am seeing some questions in regards to mortgage credit certificates, quite a few actually. Um, mm -hmm. Are all lenders required to assist work with processing MCCs? Typically, the mortgage credit certificates are through the housing finance authorities where they have to become a participating lender um, for those programs. So yes, they do need to be a part of actually applying for the program on behalf of the borrower and they have to do it prior to closing of the loan. Um, so it's very important the process is find a lender that participates in the program, have the lender um, apply on the borrower's behalf for that mortgage credit certificate, and it has to be done prior to the closing of the purchase transaction. Um, a lot of times there's question about, I'll, I'll go ahead and throw this out, a lot of MCCs are when you refinance can be um, kept as long as they notify, um, but it always has to be on the purchase transaction off the top of my head. I'm not aware of any mortgage credit certificate that can be done at time of a refinance. It's typically at the time of the purchase transaction itself and prior to that closing. Thank you, Veronica. You're welcome. Hey, well, um, Jamie is asking if you can demonstrate how to do a DPA search on a house or for an example buyer. Um, and I don't know if you have a slide that you can return back to that shows that I can't remember. I've been so busy answering questions. I can't remember if we have a slide on here that shows that. Sure. Um, so this would be an example of a landing page, not our uh, direct website. I don't, I don't have anything pulled up at the moment. Um, but just with respect to, pardon me, uh, for an example, a buyer, um, our, it's like a lime green um, button on the top right. Uh, it says find down payment help. Once that's clicked on um, the drop down menu, uh, has, uh, for example, a few questions regarding demographic information, where they're looking to purchase, income, household size, um, even sales price, and all of that information, um, which we always su suggest uh, if if you're working with a buyer that's using our website, you know, um, try and get it as 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 targeted um, as possible, 
and that'll help um, the list that that is then generated um, with that that information. Um, but no, we, we do not have a slide of that specific landing page right now. Um, I don't know if anybody else has anything with respect to um, to, to, to that. <clears throat> I will just say um, it is actually really uh, easy to find that if you just go to downpaymentresource.com, which I know is hard for um, Will to pull up right now, considering we're right in the middle of all this slide deck. But if you go to downpaymentresource.com on every single page, no matter which page you land on, that green bubble he's talking about that says found, find down payment help is on that upper right hand corner on every page. So it's really easy. Um, you can go through. I suggest anybody go through and do that. Um, it's not going to alert us in order to get results back to you. I filled it out several times myself to play around and see what kind of results that I get for customers and things like that. So it is a great thing to go and look at and uh, play around with and kind of get an idea of what kind of information you get. And if you go to, once you're filling it out, all the questions, it gets you to the next page, the second page that shows you your results, um, which will be what you see on the screen right now, showing that there's seven programs and up to $30,000 in down payment help. Once you fill out your name and your email address, and submit that to get the program details, it will shoot that email. Um, and you can see what we're talking about with the links that you can go to, um, to find more information about the specific programs, to find lenders and all kinds of other uh, helpful information. So I would suggest just hopping on there and doing that whenever you have time. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so what other uh, what other questions do we have coming in? Um, well, just one thing I'm seeing, I just want to make sure we clarify something. Not all programs require a lender to be approved to participate in that program, but they may have an internal process that would require them to get an internal approval. So it's not that every agency requires a lender to fill out a, you know, an agreement to participate. It's just, is that lender aware of the program? Um, and if so, are they able to assist with that program? Um, not that they have to be actually approved to participate in it always. There are state and local HFAs where, yes, they have to be approved lenders. There may be some other local ones, um, a few of those. But a lot of the municipality local down payment assistance programs, um, they don't require a participation agreement. It's just more is the lender aware of that program? Are they comfortable with participating in that program? And it may just be a matter of um, making them aware of it for them to participate in it or to help you with it. Awesome, thank you. Yep. I have a couple of interesting um, questions about the uh, professions, you know, the different programs that apply to professions. And there's a couple of these I'm not sure of the answer on. So I'm not sure if someone on our team knows this that can answer it. But one of them was if there is a newly hired teacher, um, say within the job for only like three months, would they qualify for the teacher program? And then another one um, was, uh, sorry, I'm trying to find it on here. Correction officers, do they, are they uh, one of the targeted professionals for those additional programs? So if anybody knows those answers, we can 
So speaking broadly with respect to time on the job, um, I've seen some programs that will outline um, a specific period, um, whether it's a certain amount of days or a certain amount of months. Um, so each program, um, if you're using our system, we will certainly have that, that information available um, if there is a requirement that, that they be on the job for uh, a certain amount of time. Um, and then with respect to the corrections officer question, um, again, uh, if if that profession is one of the outline professions, uh, we will certainly have that information present, um, but it really will all depend um, on the program um, and the guidelines itself. Absolutely, and to back up what Will said, some there are programs where um, for new teachers, as an example, need an offer letter for on, on their letterhead that an offer was given, but the program may have a requirement of that you have to maintain being a teacher for that district for a certain amount of years for to not have to pay it back or whatever. But each program, as to what Will was saying, would be specific as to what those requirements are, and we would have that information in our in our system or linked to find that information from our system on the actual website itself or into guidelines, whatever, wherever it's housed, we'll have the have it linked if it's available um, for the public to see. Um, and correction officer, yes, there are programs that um, allow correction officers and there's programs that it's more broad even where if it's um, defined by a CDC, even if it's one of those um, professionals, they would qualify for a program. So each program would have its specific details and requirements. Um, and we would have that information available. And for Thank you, Rhonda. Yeah. I can see the Q&A has been busy. Um, any other questions, Tracy? Well, um, so um, I have an interesting question. So uh, James is asking, can realtors these programs if they are processing their own home purchase or should they use a third party realtor? Is that something that you know of with the process? Uh, I'm sorry, Veronica. <laughs> sure. Um, I think it's what, if it's a program that doesn't require participation, like an approval for participation, I, I don't know that there's any rule out there in regards to a realtor, as long as they're licensed for that. I, I don't know. Um, I'm actually, Marcy, are you aware of that? Um, I've not heard that before. Uh, I have not. Great, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, these these questions have been great, um, and I think probably a few more. What what else are we seeing there, Tracy? Um, we are getting a lot of questions about stacking programs, and I gotcha. feel like you've touched on this, but it might be something good to touch on again um, about if they can apply for more than one program at the same time. Um, and if they can utilize more than one program at the same time. So maybe if you can run through that again real quick for people. Sure. Uh, again, speaking broadly, um, after they've they've um, used our site for a search, if layering of programs is allowed, uh, that will certainly be, uh, be added to the profile. And most of these programs, um, from what, what I've seen, will be very specific as to uh, um, whether or not other programs can be laid along with theirs. Um, so the answer is yes, uh, that I know programs can be stacked. Uh, but of course, um, it will be specific to program uh, requirements. Okay. Thanks, Will. Sure, sure. Um, we would... Yeah, I see a lot of questions here. We would certainly love to um, uh, 
continue uh, staying here and asking questions. And I, I, I ask that um, if your question was not answered, you know, please uh, reach out uh, info at downpaymentresource.com. Um, and please use our website, downpaymentresource.com. It is uh, just as in the word, a wonderful resource um, and something that, that, that we enjoy sharing with everyone. Um, with that said, we thank you all for joining us. Uh, again, a copy of um, this webinar will be shared with everyone. And uh, I don't know if uh, our team would, would like to share any final words. Just I don't have anything, Will. Okay, okay, great, great, no. Um, well, thank you all again, okay? And um, we, we hope to see you all again.